Welcome fire, holiday fire. <laughs> it's holiday World Cup fire. Oh, yeah. Do you like my World Cup hat? Yeah. Sorry, paddles. Yeah. Canada, you did good. No. It's the first time. Come on, every year you just hope your team gets better and better and better. And we did. And I bet twenty five dollars on them to win that game, and they came out within the first minute, scored, and I'm like, "I got to win a shit ton of money," <laughs> and then they didn't. But yeah. um, you know, there's always hockey. The, uh, <laughs> Ireland didn't make it. Um, all kinds of countries that you would think would Italy. make it. Italy didn't Italy. qualify. You qualified. Yep. You know, um, you did good. Your uniforms were good. I didn't like Germany's uniforms this year, and usually they're my favorite. I didn't like that. I didn't like that black. It looked like a black wax stripe in the middle. Yeah. Croatia always looks like Ralston Perina. Sorry. It's a, it's the red checkerboard. I can't get past because my aunt worked at Ralston Perina. Yeah. We had all kinds of Ralston Perina for that. Um, I love soccer, but I know I'm in the minority when it comes to Americans, but my brother's played, and it's a St. Louis thing. St. The Midwest, I, it's not just St. Louis, but like St. Louis really likes soccer. Uh-huh. Nashville's getting on board. They got a team now. Yeah. I went. It was fun. Yeah. And two people from St. Louis are on the United States team, and they went to the same grade school as my cousin Maureen. No way. Yep. Mm-hmm. Wow. Mm-hmm. That's a big deal, considering how big the country is. Yeah. Um, and this will be over. You guys will hear this on Wednesday, and I'm, I'm taping this on Monday. So tomorrow, well, it won't be tomorrow when you hear this, but I'm going to watch. That's I've, so it won't be tomorrow till I say so, Paddles. Okay, <laughs> it'll be tomorrow. God damn it, when I say it's tomorrow, and it's not tomorrow. Got it. Tuesday, the World Cup game will be played. We will see if the United States will advance. <laughs> They're playing Iran. Iran's very mad at us because we changed their flag, and we say Iran instead of Iran. Iran. Unless you're, um, I don't know, a fancy person on the news. Maybe you say Chile. Chile. I don't know. I grew up with Chile. It's called Chile. <laughs> Well, we don't use the accent in every single thing. We don't say China. We say China. China. No, China. If you're in the South, that's, it's got seven syllables. China. What am I drinking? This is from Andrea and Danielle. Danielle, a lot of stuff from Minnesota finally got back to the house. Nice. Very Yes, this is a cream ale. It's a castle cream ale nice. from Minnesota. Yes, very nice. And they said, thanks for keeping these sisters laughing. Love the pubcast. All they could find was a holiday card. That's fine. It's the holidays. <laughs> yeah. What else? That was fine. Yeah, the they put a bunch of beers backstage. Delicious. And I either drank them, shared one them w- with the staff, um, or Kelly McFarlane. She likes a good beer every now and then too. The opening act. Um, we got a lot. Of, I got a lot of stuff backstage in Minnesota. I think I said that Thank the last you. time, but it finally made it back here. You got some for me. Thank you. Yes, and paddles. You got some too. Um, this is from Leah, and she left me these dots pretzels. Never heard of dots. I've seen them, I've never tried them. I know dot food. Well, I think that's the same thing. Mmm. <laughs> Original seasoned pretzel Ooh. twist. Small town recipe. Big time flavor. North Dakota. Wow. Wow. So that's what they're doing. Oh, here's Dot. There's a picture of her. No way. Yeah. How old is she? I don't know. 40? Come on. Sorry if you're younger, Dot. I don't know. You know, she could be anywhere from 35. I don't, that's a terrible thing. I shouldn't have guessed. Dot. Dotsbrussels.com. I have a hard time reading these packages even with glasses on. It's from somewhere in North Dakota. I can't. Velveeta. Velveeta. No, that's not a city. It's cheese. Wow. Well, I can't read it, but it's North Dakota. Dot looks like a normal, happy American. Velva. Velva. Well, good job, Dot. Yeah. I like them a lot. I'll be taking those on the road tomorrow. No. It's not tomorrow yet, because I haven't said so. I'll be taking them on the road to where? Spokane, Washington. San Diego. Really, I'll call home. Yeah. And Riverside. So, thank you, Leah. Leah brought that. And then, boom. A Wisconsin turned my mule shit over the border. Nice. A lot of you may not know Wisconsin. You can get there. Like, it was only, like, my friends, it's like an hour. So it's not really, like, she muled some curds. No. Yeah, Ellsworth. Oh. A cooperative creamery. Cheese curd capital of the world. No way. 
Uh-huh. We caught them. They're ranch ones. No. Mm-hmm. Oh. And they were delicious. Wow. This delicious. could probably put you in a hospital if oh. you really went at it. Let's try it. Clog off. I'm going to give it to my dad, see if I can clog some more of his arteries. <laughs> Come on, Dad. We just had those scraped out. Let's fill them back up. Come on. Uh-huh. It took 80 years to get that full. <laughs> Certainly, we can. you can have a cheese curd. Those are delicious. She also brought some new glass about a cow over. Um, Kim and Aaron did that, and they had a nice little card. And they gave me a brochure in case I'd like to know more about the cheese curd capital of the world. You've got to go there. Well, and I'm the kind of nerd that would read all that shit and then show up. You should. Yeah, I will show up. Let's go. Yeah. yeah. And then berate them because they don't have T-shirts that I like. No, I would never do that. <laughs> but. Happy Thanksgiving. Uh... Amy, Kim, and Aaron. Wisconsin beer and cheese guard. Just wonderful. wonderful mm-hmm. Great. Moving on. Brooke. Brooke sent this hot sauce. It's called Cry Baby Craig's. It's from many. <laughs> he, I know. I love it. It's, um, it's uh, habanero, and it's from Minneapolis, Minnesota. I love a hot sauce. Every time my sister comes, she makes fun of my refrigerator because she's like, is that all you fucking eat is hot sauce? That's all you need. Yeah. That's all you need yeah. is hot sauce. That's all you need. If you have crackers or anything else, hot sauce, and then you change up your hot sauce, it's like a whole different meal. Wow. Wow. Okay. Pepper? It's hot. Yeah. It's very good, but it's hot. Hotter the better. Well, this can't go on like eggs or something. <laughs> what does it go on? Like, a, I don't know. Oh. French fries? Fries. Yeah. Huh. It's too much in the morning. Your brains would be blown it's out. An sauce. Yeah, that's from Brooke. Thank you, Brooke. That's an afternoon thing. Yeah. Um, Lauren and Mike brought me this little um, thing. It's a little Irish good luck charm. They made. <laughs> she made it. What? Um, yeah, it's a leprechaun. Wow. Yeah, she did it. She made it. Um, she drives every week three hours to visit my mom who has Alzheimer's. Listen to the podcast. Um, your stories make me laugh, and many thanks, Minnesota Termite. Oh, Lauren and Mike. I won't say the last name because people may not want to know that. That's cool. Yes, Leanne. Then, enough, then we're almost done with this and we'll keep moving on. Leanne, a very nice termite, brought me some beers. And she, um, she's a pediatric home care night, a home care night nurse. Care for uh, medically complex kids that would, without nurses in the home, would most likely be living in a hospital. So that's nice. I sit in dark rooms with sleeping kids on ventilators that make a soothing, rhythmic, white, white noise. As you can imagine can be a struggle to stay awake at some times. So she listens to the podcast sometimes. I'm in the rotation. Now, that's a lot better than one time my friend Anita Baker told me that she listened to Bothering Jesus to put her to sleep. I'm like, that <laughs> is not the intention of a comedy thing. She's like, no, there's just something about your voice. I'm like, don't ever tell people that um, that story again. And I just told it again, but it's funny. That's mm-hmm. She brought some local beer. That's from Leanne. And last but not least, uh, oh, some more termites. It's muled over some New Glarus from Wisconsin. And look, they have a, there's a print store, by the way. This card, see if you're not watching this, it, it's a Prince card because Minneapolis. And there's a Prince store in the Minneapolis airport. Sometimes it's not open super early because I always take the first flight out. But boy, if you have time in between flights, it's in the main center. They just ask somebody. By the walleye bar. Uh, by the walleye <laughs> bar. Well, is that, that's what I call it. I don't know that it's called the walleye bar. It's where I get my walleye. This is from Mona. She, um, she thought, said, I hope it makes it to you. By the way, all things make it to me for the most part. Um, oh, it's just uh, next to a fancy golf course in Rome, Wisconsin. Cool. Yeah. Her sister got a place. Anyway. So good job. Midwest termites. Lots of fun treats. How was everybody's Thanksgiving? Fine. Good. Paddles don't care. It's not Canadian Thanksgiving, is it? No, but I celebrated. You celebrated? Yep. Doing what? I had a Friendsgiving. Oh, Friendsgiving. <laughs> oh, God. I watched football and gambling. Yeah, football <laughs> and gambling is really what it's all about, and yes. I'm so glad there's more games now. And now that I've got the, the kids in the fantasy league, the kids are on board too. Like, you know, my mom will go, why don't we all do? No, no, football's on. No, no. We're do playing fantasy. <laughs> yeah. 
Do you guys want to play a board game or a singing game? Nope. <laughs> nope. Not unless that singing involves the next odds for the next game, Mom. <laughs> What's the over-under in the cowboy game? What's a singing game? <laughs> um, we did some singing. I can't get into it. it the tw- It was a Christmas thing, and it was, I don't know, it was too early. Okay. Yeah, I didn't get into it's it. It's not December yet. No, uh, no, it was a precursor. Okay. Yes. Um, okay, moving on to the to everything. Do I have any queen news? Yes. So Thursday, you'll be hearing this on Wednesday most likely. Tomorrow. Tomorrow is when I say it's tomorrow. <laughs> it's not tomorrow. Tomorrow. <laughs> Dolly has an NBC Christmas movie. When? Lots of guest stars. Thursday, whatever the date is. I don't know what the date is today. I don't know. Today is the 28th. It'll be November 3rd. No, 31st. Is it 31st? No, there's only 30 days. It'll be December 1st, my mom's birthday. And what did she get? A brand new television hung on her wall with a sound bar. The neighbors are going to hate me, and they're going to hate the man who hung it. And they're really going to hate my dad because yeah. I can hear the news. What? I can hear the news when I pull up in the car. No. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. mm-hmm. I try to time it. So right it's at, it's at 530 and I can hear Lester Holt go, welcome to NBC Nightly News. And I can hear it outside. Uh, so Dolly's going to have this Christmas movie and um, many guest stars, many heavy hitters. Willie Nelson, I mean, she called in a lot of the gang. Google the guest stars on Dolly's Thing and we'll read them off because it's worth it. Guest stars on Dolly's Thing. Guest stars on Dolly's Thing. <laughs> yes, that's what we're going for. See who's in it. It's beside, I just remember Willie. Put my, oh my God. Dolly Parton's Mountain Magic Christmas. Her Mountain Magic Christmas. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. So good. Who's the guest stars? Willie. Willie. Billy. Billy. <laughs> Chili? <laughs> who's Jimmy? Jimmy Allen. Jimmy Allen. Zach Williams. Zach Williams. Uh-huh. I don't know who that Jimmy is. Jimmy Fallon. Miley Cyrus. Miley. I thought her and Billy are fighting. Her and her daddy are fighting. They, uh, different yeah, different filming, different hours, different wow. days, different makeup trailers. Yeah. yeah. Anybody else? Nope. Nobody you'd know. Nobody I'd know. Well, good for Dolly Love Love for doing them. NBC because that's probably a big paycheck. Now, if you're a Hallmark movie person... Um, I, I am too. There's been a big hubbub going on in the Christmas <laughs> movie land because Cam Cameron Cr- Creme Brulee, that's Candace. what I call her, Candace Creme Brulee, yeah. right? Her she's sister of Kirk Cameron, who's a little out there. Is that a polite way to say it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah like end times shit. Yeah, but anyway. Candace Creme Brulee has abandoned the Hallmark Network. Why? Because she's going to, I think it's called the Great American, the American Christian Country Station. Dang. What? <laughs> Great American Country. Great American Living? No. Great American Family? No. Come on, the no. network. Great American Country. Great American Country? Yeah. Great American Family. That's one time they asked me to be on a cooking segment on their morning show, and I Googled it all, oh, and it just God. looked a little too wholesome for this Catholic. You know what I'm saying? Um, it, wholesome people. Well, there you go. I'm not wholesome. wholesome. There is nothing wholesome about what's going on in this desk right now. There's fire, hot sauce, cheese curds, alcohol. Tennessee's winning. Boom. Tennessee's winning. What? Oh, yeah, Tennessee, Fred Bird. I mean, I know I'm not a wholesome person, no, Bucky. You're not. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know why they asked me. And why would you ask me on a cooking segment? I don't know how to cook, and I don't have any interest in it. Unless I go on Trisha Yearwoods because I believe she'll let me eat the food. The rest of them, I don't think you get to eat it. No. I've yeah. done them on TV shows because I, I got roped into it. I don't like it. You're a good I like melter. I don't like anything no. about cooking. I would never cook in my whole life if I didn't have to. I'll make my mom's dressing because I like it. But that's about it. Yeah. Anyway, Candace Creme Brulee <laughs> <laughs> is 
is a big star of the Hallmark movies, if you don't follow. There's a few. Lacey, I always want to call her Peterson, but that's Shall the lady Air. who died. Shem Blair, Lacey, Shem Blair. They use like the same seven actors over and over and over and over and over. Well, Candace Grimble has abandoned the Hallmark movie. Now, she should have just said, well, I'm going over to the great American family because I feel like they represent my wholesome values. But she kind of went a little too far there and said it's the it, Hallmark channel's getting too gay. Yeah. Now. Meaning gay. Meaning. Not happy. Gay. <laughs> <laughs> meaning gay people are in it. Yeah. And some of the episodes and she doesn't want that. So she's going to no. go. Oh, and then that lady that was on the show, Danica Full House, Danica, who went with her? McKellar, the one with the giant eyes. <laughs> she left too. Yeah. Oh, we got two that have abandoned yeah. ship. Jessica Lowndes. Jessica Lowndes. No, no, no. You got to be a star star. Jen Lilly. I don't know who these people are, Paddles. Nobody knows. We got to stop talking really, about this. Really, really weird oh, it, no. That lady's parents were found dead in the heat deal. What? What are you talking they didn't about? pay the heating bill. Oh. I'm serious. Totally serious. Oh, Jen Lily. She's wholesome values, but she started on General Hospital. <laughs> she started on General Hospital and wants wholesome values. Well, I don't think all that sex on those shows is wholesome. Oh, What's the definition of wholesome? Exactly. Definition. <laughs> <laughs> I am fine with Candace Creme Brulee getting off the Hallmark Channel because that makes room for somebody else who's more interesting. This lady's a hoe. She been she been a uh, soap jumping. Yeah. Well, you know you got to get the work where you got to get the work. All right, enough paddles. Just saying, there's a lot of shit going down in Christmas land. She has four kids at what age? She was born in eighty four. Born in eighty four. Wow. Well, my mom had four by twenty five. You know, it happens. It is different times. Yeah. Um, and hopefully Kirk Cameron, Crimbers, Candace Bremberley's brother is not right. Because he posts a lot of end times shit. Yeah. Yeah, I don't want end times yet. Not yet. We're having fun. We're having blast. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, all right, moving on. That's all the queen news I got. Um, Dolly's got a Christmas party. I don't know. Tanya, share share trends every day. I can barely keep up with it. Stevie's got her Frito, Frito badge on. Shaka's been quiet. I got... People are divided on Tay-Tay being a queen. Yeah, we need Anita. We need, we'll, we'll get Anita. Yeah. If I have to make one myself. Yeah. I'll do it. I'll figure it out. Um, There was somebody else, though, that I thought about recently. Why not Elton John? He says he's a queen. Oh, yeah. Right? Hey. Somebody said. Uh, you can do it on behalf of the Hallmark Channel. <laughs> on behalf of the Hallmark Channel. Well, on behalf of his last show. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, then I think his last one's in London. Anyway, update! We're moving on. So I have to correct myself, Termites. Well, I don't have to correct myself. Christie's of London has to correct itself. They are canceling the sale of the 15 to $20 million T-Rex that we talked about last week. No. Over concerns about number of replica bones. People are building fake ones. Shit, you're not. <laughs> Christie's has withdrawn the sale of a T-Rex skeleton plan for auction in Hong Kong over concerns of how many bones are replicas. Oh, they spelled a long road. They they spelled a long wrong. They spelled it uh, al nog, along with copyright concerns from a notable fossil company. The auction for T-Rex named Shen. So this one, which was scheduled for November 30th, was expected to fit, uh, fetch 15 to 20 million. However, the lot was withdrawn after questions were sent to Christie's from the Black Hills Institute of Geological Research Fossil Company about the slimmer areas between Shen's bones and another high-profile T-Rex skeleton sold in, in 2020. They often, it, the last one they auctioned off was named Stan, that T-Rex, this guy's Shen, for a record $31 million. The legal company, the legal agreement allowed the company to continue to sell approximately 100 painted casks of the skeleton made by 
of polyurethane for $120,000, blah, blah, blah. So there's, they're just, it's not, there's not enough bones in it that are real to make it real. Right. Yeah. <sighs> Christie's of London. Get your shit together, right? I don't, I've never even, I don't even know where you go to, to find Christie's in London. And I've been to London. I never thought about looking. I should have went in there just to see what's good. I wonder if you could just go in. Update! January 6th rioter who filmed Pelosi laptop theft jailed after jury convicts her on six counts. Oh, and it's one of the children. She's 23 years old. Oh. Mm hmm. Riley June. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Her name's Riley June. She's released from a Dauphin County prison in Harrisburg. She was released in uh, January 21st, 2021, in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. A federal judge. Uh, ordered Riley, a 23-year-old right-wing extremist, taken into federal custody after a jury convicted her on six of the eight counts she faced in the connection with, in, in connection with the January 6th attack. She was found guilty. The jury deadlocked on two others, including whether she aided and abetted the theft of the laptop in the office of House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. She is a follower of the grouper movement. What is that? I, I thought it was a fish. What? Maybe what? I'm saying it wrong. Groiper, G-R-O-Y-P-E-R. Google it. Whatever. She's, 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 America first. Oh, many hold racist and anti-Semitic views. Many hold racist and anti-Semitic views. They don't say they're white supremacists. They're pure Christians. Oh, they're, they don't say white supremacists. They say pure Christians? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's not very nice to real Christians. No. You know? They, uh, You're giving them a bad name. All right. Um, well, the children know about it. Um, she was part of the mob that uh, ran up to Nancy's office. She also pushed up against Copt and tried to organize other rioters inside the Capitol grounds. She had faced a total of eight charges, civil disorder, destruction of official proceeding, resisting and imp impeding officers, aiding and abetting theft of government property and four misdemeanors. Um, Judge Amy Berman Jackson said she had no confidence whatsoever that Williams had respect for the rule of law and granted a government request for her to be detained until her sentencing. See, unlike Elizabeth Holmes, oh, I'm sorry, Elizabeth Holmes, um, this girl doesn't get to walk free till her sentencing. Nope. Now, who's more of a flight risk? Hello, Elizabeth. <laughs> She's got the money. This kid has their zero dollars. Nope. Zero dollars. I mean, I'm guessing by looking, she's 23 too. How many 20? She showed little emotion when the jury returned his verdict and was clearly upset by Jackson's decision to lock her up. As she was taken into custody, custody, she was wearing an outfit that resembled a school uniform. She removed her tie and gave her pink purse to her lawyer who handed it to a male companion in the court gallery. Fuck him, she appeared to mouth to the man. I'm sorry. Who are you sorry to? Him? Your boyfriend? Or who's this man? Who's this guy? Why doesn't anybody identify? This story's lacking. Just saying. <laughs> My journalism school skills are better than this. Um, so we'll see. Yeah. I don't know how long she's going for. They haven't sentenced her yet. Hopefully a while. Um, Williams Federick. Federal public defenders argued that while Williams had distasteful beliefs, she had come to D.C. with nothing but her cell phone and her fuzzy zebra bag. <laughs> uh, she bragged about her acts online, online, online. She did it. She did it. When will the children learn? Commit your crimes in silence. No. No, that's why they do it. That's why half the reason why they do it. It doesn't happen. It was not she bragged about her acts because she wanted to be somebody. Well. You are your prisoner four nine four nine seven. I just made I just made up that number. Sounded official though, didn't it? Sounded like I know what I'm talking about. Totally. We'll keep you updated on Riley June. Riley, what'd you go get into in DC? Not zebra She gonna be in prison for a couple of years, I would imagine. Okay, this update makes me. I don't know why I find such joy in Zuckerberg's failures, but I do. Because I, I think he's an avatar. I don't think he's a real person, and he's. I think he's destroying things. Yeah. Especially in, over in Hawaii, he bought all that shit. You're like, yeah, he's a jerk. 
On November 15th, Meta unveiled a new large language model called Galactica, designed to assist scientists. But instead of landing with the Big Bang Meta hoped for, Galactica has died with a whimper after three days of intense criticism. Yesterday, the company took down the public demo that had it, it had encouraged everyone to try out. Its missteps and its hubris show once again that the big tech has a blind spot about severe limitations on large language models. Now, I don't even know what a language model is. But whatever, this one failed. There's a large body of research that highlights the flaws of this technology, including its tendencies to reproduce prejudice and assert falsehoods as facts. However, Meta and other companies working on large language models, including Google, have failed to take it seriously. Galactica is a large language model. Um, they wait. I wanted to tell you though, we don't. You don't need to understand. It. It's a language model, whatever the hell that is. See, yeah. see what it says. See what the giggle says about that. What is about it? What? What's a language model? <laughs> Galactica is a mindless bot that cannot tell facts for fictions. Within our scientists, it's, we're sh- it's probability distribution. Probability distribution. Mm-hmm. Once it's again, it's I've been told the definition of something, <laughs> and I don't understand the They're definition. Useful for a of but in understanding. it's useful for a variety of problems in. Com- no, we'll put it in the notes. All right. Yeah. Within our hours. Scientists were sharing its bias and incorrect results on social media. Wow. They just started so that all the scientists were like, this is just garbage. (laughs) Um, It's gone. I mean, three days. (laughs) In all cases, it was wrong or biased or sounded right and authoritative. I think it's dangerous. Um... Then this guy went through. Then the the super nerds, <laughs> the super nerds went all in, and really got pissed off. Okay. Um. The yeah, the rest of it gets too hard, especially when you don't understand the definition. The definition, but it lasted three days, and he told everybody to go. Here's the thing: if you tell, if you're gonna tell, all the science folks, uh-huh. um, to go try something, yeah. you better make sure it works. How do you put that up and tell them? Because it's not like if you told a bunch of beer drinkers to go do something. <laughs> we might or we might not. And we probably, if it just kind of half ass work, we'd be like, yeah, that's kind of cool. cool. But you can't tell these people to take this shit seriously. No. no. Holy shit, they found it. <laughs> I'm moving on. Yay. This is awesome. Why, does it these, why don't these things happen to me when I'm walking at the creek at our farm in Missouri? The creek's really low. Me and my mom went looking for arrowheads. Jeff Fox were these other favorite pastime. And Missouri Round Rocks. I found a lot of cool stuff this weekend, but anyway. What'd you find? Oh, like tools. Potter, ancient pottery tools. She found ancient pottery tools. Yes, ancient pottery tools. Where are they now? My mom knows the name of all of them because she's a super nerd and researches it all, and then she contacts some man who I'm certain is very excited to speak to, Vicki <laughs> Madigan, at the University of Missouri uh, in the such and such department. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like the when they had the bowl and the thing that you pesto, pesto, yeah. pesto, pasta, pasta. <laughs> uh, tools. There, I found a, like a turtle. They they made art. It's all kinds of shit. Huh. Yeah, Great. but listen to this: a dried up river exposes a rare fossil of the largest big cat on the continent, the American lion. The last thing Willie Pruitt of Exford, Mississippi. I've been to Mississippi quite a lot, and I've never heard of Exford. Huh. Expected to find on a walk was a fossil from an animal that roamed the region roughly 11,000 years ago. He stumbled upon what resembled a jawbone with black teeth on October 26 near Rosedale, around 140 miles northwest of Jackson. Okay, then I know where that's at. As he poked around a sandbar that it exposed itself due to the low water levels on the Mississippi River, I could tell from the teeth right away that it was a fragment of a carnivore's jaws, but I dared not hope it was from an American lion. I, it, looks, it certainly looked right, but I wouldn't let myself believe that. Was it the first of its kind? Surely it couldn't be the American lion. Uh, questions were aplenty, and there was only one right way to rightly confirm. Three days later, Pruitt visited Mississippi Fossil and Artifacts Symposium and Exhibition event and asked for an expert opinion. Little did he know 
that his discovery made history. It is indeed a fossilized jawbone of the largest cat on the continent, the American lion, until they went extinct. Eight feet long. Ooh, eight feet long. God, I think of baby cat. Baby cat's probably only one foot long. One one and a half. Eight feet long. Weighed 1,000 pounds, the American lion, and is reported to be heavier than the saber-toothed tiger. The giants date back 340,000 years and preyed on large animals across the continent from Alaska to southern Mexico. His was only the fourth fossil evidence of the lion. And the other three were found in Mississippi, too. That's crazy. Yeah, that's weird. Why why are they all in Mississippi? Um, Surprisingly, the symposium happened to have an exhibit of these previously found fossils. What are the odds? Event organizer said that Pruitt made history by showing up with a definitive American lion fossil. I've had very important artifacts and fossils come into my outreach programs, but nothing as significant as a newly discovered American lion. Yeah, the extinct lion was first, dis- the first one was discovered in Natchez, Mississippi in the 1830s. No one knew that giant lo- lions roamed North America until this famous Mississippi discovery. The only other two were discovered near the Mississippi River near Clarksdale, Mississippi, and Rosedale, Mississippi. How great is that? Nice. You found a lion. A whole yeah. Yep. I'm picking up rocks in a creek going, does this look like a turtle? <laughs> That somebody made as a little piece of art for one of their children. (laughs) Here's another. Holy shit, they found it. Is this pottery? (laughs) A massive ancient sea turtle discovered in Spain was nearly the size of a car. Sea turtle the size of a car. Well, they don't say what kind of car, but I'm going to say if it's a Spanish, Spain, it's a tiny sedan. Yeah, it's a tiny (laughs) car, but it's still that. Paleontologists in Spain believe they unearthed the new prehistoric sea turtle species that may have been the largest ever. Researchers at the Autonomous University of Barcelona analyzed the pelvis bone and posterior part of the shell recovered from the Pyrenees mountain range in northeastern Spain in 2016 to 2021, and they determined the turtle was 12 feet long. Whoa. Wow. Um, a hiker traversing the Pyrenees in 2016 stumbled upon a part of the fossil. There's a picture of what they think it looked like. If you happen to be in the water and saw this thing coming at you, that's it. You're <laughs> done. You're done. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't want to see things go extinct, but I'm glad I can walk out my front door and there's not a T-Rex. <laughs> you know, or an American lion for that matter. Um, the There's only one turtle bigger in the history of our world. The newly discovered turtle is slightly smaller than the extinct Archelon, the world's largest known prehistoric sea turtle. They could grow up to be 15 feet long as weigh as much as 3.5 tons. Wow. This is the largest one ever, though, found in Europe. Good for him. Now, see, do you get anything? Do you get a free pass to the museum or something? You should. Yeah, yeah, maybe not money, you but... You should recommend that. A little plaque? Yeah. Found by? How about a trophy? A trophy would be yeah. great. Right. <laughs> Moving on to news. Where are my math nerds at? I got something for you. Because it ain't for me. Brace yourselves. Brace yourselves. (laughs) Who wants it? Einstein's handwritten math notes. Expected to fetch 70 grand at an auction. A sheet of paper covered in the mathematic notes of renowned physicist Albert Einstein is tipped to sell. The genius mathematician wrote down a series of scientific equations in ink and pencil on the plain paper. He crossed out small sections of the draft manuscript, showing even the finest minds make the odd mistake. You know, we're going to put a picture of these notes in the schnotes. It doesn't even look like a language I'm familiar with. And it's numbers. I don't... It is like a code. Yeah, it is a code. It's not like a code. It's a code. And then there was a letter with it that he wrote in 1933, just months after he renounced his German citizenship and was forced to flee the not flee the Nazis. He left Germany. I mean, it's like bracket parentheses R I X minus G slash. Whoa, that's an upside down triangle. <laughs> ah, that it looks like a little bird in a plane. G T parentheses closed minus parentheses. K, K I K, kick, kick with an I, well, cursive I above that minus half 
do's, D-O, with a tiny, 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 tiny four above that. <laughs> Upside down triangle. I mean. I, this I, is what makes your phone go. This is, this is what your galaxy goes. That's, yeah. I guess. Tragically, the exiled scientist signed off with the mournful message, Albert Einstein, from the graveyard of buried hopes. Huh. That was his letter. The documents are being sold at the international autograph auctions in Malaga, Spain. Richard Davies, specialist at the auction thing, while Einstein clearly created many such pages of scientific formulas during his career, they remain highly sought after by collectors and are signed examples of exceptional rarity. Again, I think this should be in a museum. It should. Some, like, wherever, wherever he wanted it. Furthermore, the present example is greatly enhanced by both Einstein's handwritten observation, reflecting on the possibility of what, what he wished to have achieved with his calculations, and the fine accompaniment letter of provenance from Elsa Einstein. That's his wife. Was his wife. Did you ever watch the thing with what's-his-face about Einstein, the Nat Geo thing? With um, Jeffrey, Jeffrey Jeffrey Rush, Rush. plays, oh my God, he plays Einstein. He is just a wonderful actor in the whole thing. Then you kind of don't like Einstein, though. No, but we don't have to give that away, do we? Well, make up your own mind, but, you know, he was weird. I think he was a dick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you make up your own mind, but I think he was a dick. He wasn't very nice to his wife or kids. I don't know. Maybe people that smart. See, I can't say that. Those are probably really smart people that are nice. Yeah. In March 1993, Albert and Elsa returned to Europe from America and learned that Hitler had seized power and that the Gestapo had raided their Berlin apartment, confiscating several of their possessions, landing in Antwerp, blah, 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 blah. Well, you guys know the rest of his life. He died in 1955 at age 76. His notes will be sold on November 30th. I mean, I don't know. I think they should go to a... Is there, are there math and science museums? Well, like we have the Smithsonian, the Smithsonian Sony in space. Yeah, but he might not want his in America. Maybe he wants them back in Germany. Somebody should contact his people. His people? Yeah. Right. Seinfeld used to have a good joke. Oh, my God, I forgot to say that, too. Seinfeld used to have a good joke about in the Smithsonian. There was a the science part, the, the, the aerospace. Uh-huh. Um. There was a toothbrush, and it said, on loan from Neil Armstrong. And Jerry was like, really, Neil? You couldn't just give him the toothbrush? You, you got, it's on loan. Do you want it, do you want it back? <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Jerry, I forgot. This came in the mail. I don't even know who sent it. Came to the house. Simon it's the Simon & Schuster. And then I thought, I saw the box. I'm like, oh, did Carly Simon hear us talking about her on the podcast? <laughs> I doubt it. Uh, mm-hmm. From the family vault. Yeah. No, it's the comedian and cars coffee table book. Great. It's very well done. Uh, Super heavy. Yeah, I'm in here some. Great. Yeah. It's it's interesting. Oh. I you know, and then I was like, Yeah, I think I signed something a long time ago. Yeah. Where they were like, Hey, do you care if we eat whatever? And I'm like, No, that's fine. To be in it, I guess. But I had forgotten about it. That was quite a while ago. But well done. But I forgot to say this came in the mail. It was shocking because I don't... Well, I mean, I should remember I did it, but I'd spent a long time. And then I forgot to show you guys this, the Diamonds and Rhinestone Dolly album. That's fantastic. I don't even want to open it. I just like the cover. It's really cool. The purple is fantastic. Yeah. Or is it black? It's black and sparkly. It's black and purple. There's purple on there to go with the butterfly. Anyway, I forgot about that. Germany... um, what? It's called the Deutsch Museum. Germany has a Smithsonian? Yeah. The Deutsch Museum? Well, I don't know where he would have wanted his stuff. He probably wants them at Princeton. He taught at Princeton. Einstein. Yeah. yeah. All right. Let's let's move on to Rhinestones and Glitter. Nope. The Chrisleys don't know best. Like I said, rhinestones <laughs> and glitter. <laughs> Diamonds and rhinestones. It's not rhinestones and glitter. The name, no, the name of Dolly's album is Di- Diamonds and Rhinestone, the Greatest Hits Collection. What's on it? Anything awesome? Yeah. Great 9 to 5, Jolene, here you come again. Islands in the Sun. Stream. Stream. <laughs> <laughs> Kenny Rogers. I didn't love that song. I loved it. Did you? Yes. 
I don't know. I will always love you, Coat of Many Colors, by Tennessee Mountain Home, The Bargain Store, Baby, I'm Burning, Better Get to Living, Feeling Better. I like that song. Love is a Butterfly Heart, Red Shoes, The Sea. It goes on and on, all the hits. What do you want? Yes, what we're doing Two Doors Down, When Life is Good Again, Silver, Threads, and Golden News, with Loretta Lynn and Tammy Wynette. Come on. Yeah. Anyway, that book was under here, so I forgot that. Let's move on to Chris Lee Doesn't Know Best. <laughs> so here's the thing in Nashville. A friend of mine, Nancy, uh, she lives in a nice neighborhood and then told me one time that um, the Chris Lees were buying, I guess buying, I don't know, the house. Yeah. Right down in the way, in the in the yeah. street. Yonder. yonder, down yonder. <laughs> and I was like, what did they do? Like, I never watched that reality show. And I'm not saying I'm above it. I watch a lot of garbage TV. Right. But you're but, also not saying that's garbage TV. Well, <laughs> I'm saying it's my version of garbage TV. Things that don't make your head hurt. You know, just easy, breezy, easy things. Like, so I, I know that it had been on at times when I was in the gym and it was just on channels. Uh-huh. Same with thing with the Kardashian deal. But I didn't understand why am I supposed to know who these people are? Like, what is their deal? So then I went and looked at a couple of them on YouTube. I, I can see where people would want to keep watching this guy. But to me, he's kind of like a poor man's Leslie Jordan. Well, Leslie Jordan's way, 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 way better. Right. Like, he's just fun. And, and then I was like, is he really married to this lady? For reals? Um, okay, whatever. But, like, I could tell from the real, from doing reality TV and having friends that work in reality TV, they just kept finding shit for these people to do. They're not really doing it. It's too pre... It, it just seemed outdated. But whatever. I could... Every, we all have our guilty pleasures. I mean, mine's Monarch. Hello. What's that telling you? Who about... I can't judge when I'm sitting there watching Monarch. Um, so I'm not judging it. You're a but you're a Roman, and that's how we're going to behave. Romans do what Romans do. I just was surprised it was a hit. I could see the Kardashians and all that more so because they're L.A. and it's Hollywood. But these guys, well, right, and whatever. I tried to watch some. Maybe I need to go back to the first season. There were nine. What? Nine seasons of this shit. Yes, since 2014. And they bought homes in Nashville. Well, this is why sometimes I really like People Magazine. You gotta watch it. Now, the only place I see People Magazine anymore is usually at, like, the dentist office or somewhere easy. No, I mean where it's available to read for free while you're waiting. Sometimes people in the grocery store, you can't read a whole People Magazine. Jesus, go to self-checkout panels. What's the matter with you, Grandma? You standing there behind people? Well, the line's super long today. I guess I'll read people. I'm finished the Inquirer. Let's move on. God, I. <laughs> and then I read somebody that he had a gay lover guy who's who turned him in. I got to get into that story more for next week if that's who turned them in. This is what I do not understand about criminals. <laughs> These kind of criminals. Well, this is what I love about People Magazine. Let's get back to that. This is why they're just a wonderful thing. They start out their article, Who are Todd and Julie Chrisley? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Because it's like, this would be like, I'm at this point like explaining something to my parents. You have to explain this to me like I explain shit to my mom and dad. Todd and Julie Christie are married stars of the reality series Chrisley Knows Best. It premiered on the USA Network in 2014 and is entering part two of its ninth season in June. Wow. Let me see when this was written. It's a summation. Oh, okay, this was 11 22 So this is gone. The series center around patriarch, tar, patriarch, patriarch Todd and his brutally honest parenting style towards his five children, Lindsay, Kyle, Chase, Savannah, and Grayson. The family drama spawned a docuseries titled Growing Up Chrisley, that follows the lives of Chase and Savannah as they enter adulthood. One of them, I believe, I see sometimes golfing. Uh-huh. I seems friendly. Chase. Chase. Yeah. 
Yeah, I don't know. Very nice. Seems very nice. Uh-huh. My spy in the pro shop says very nice. <laughs> <laughs> I have a spy. Because whatever there's... But I didn't know that was some... I didn't even know who that person was. No, you don't but know. I don't know who Cole Swindell is no. when people... Every time... Every time, single time, Brian will go, he said hi to you again, Maddie. I'm like, who said hi? <laughs> That guy, I go, he's like, I, I, go, I don't know who that is. I like, said hi back, but I don't know who he is. Right. He's a famous country singer. He seems very nice. But I got to say, in a golf outfit, hat on, yeah. shorts, they all have the same Travis Matthew. They all look adorable, but they all look identical, yeah. unless you're Jamie Johnson. Then I go, ho, ho, there's my friend Jamie Johnson. <laughs> and then the rest of them are just old guys that are not famous people. That's a beard coming at you. <laughs> yeah, that's a beard and a half. He's so funny, though. He will j- jump out of a, go- a moving golf cart to run over and hug me. He'll stop my <laughs> golf cart. He's so nice. He's great. And I didn't know anything about his music either till after I'd already met him through Ron. I, as you know, I'm not really up on the country. I have to get on. I got to go listen to Cole Swindell now. I feel bad I don't know. But anyway, this Chase person, sidetrack. Sorry about all that. Uh, I know boring <laughs> golf talk. No, it's great. I love golf talk. Shut up. What were Todd and Julie Chrisley indicted for in 2019? This is why I love this article, because it just hears the facts. They were indicted on 12 counts of bank and wire fraud, tax evasion, and conspiracy in 2019 after being accused of evading nearly $2 million in state taxes between 2018 and 2016. Prosecutors also claimed that their production, they used their production company, 7C Productions, to hide over a million dollars worth of their reality TV income from the IRS and alleged that Todd directed an employee to falsely falsify income and uh, asset documents. Okay. They turned themselves in. This is in Georgia, and they pleaded not guilty to the charges at the time. That October, the Georgia Revenue Department of Revenue cleared them, so they were good to go in the state of Georgia. No problems. Uh-huh. You're cleared. Agreeing that Chris Lee knows best, and they'd overpaid in those four years, and they owed nothing for the other four. Okay, good job. Mm-hmm. In total, they had a net liability of less than $77,000 in overdue taxes for just one year of incorrect filing. That's not abnormal. What are they on trial for now? Well, although the Georgia Department of Revenue signed a settlement agreement that ended a two-year investigation of the couple's alleged state tax liabilities per a press release shared with people, they continue to face federal charges for allegedly evading federal taxes during those same years. Both face one count of conspiracy to commit bank fraud. They lied to banks to get loans. Now, here's what I don't get. Eventually, if you're lying to the bank... To get money, uh-huh. you clearly need the money. Right. And you're not going to have the money to pay the bank back. Like, I'd rather take my chances with two meth heads robbing a 7-Eleven. <laughs> because if we do it uh-huh. and we get away with it, you're good. we're good. Yep. Well, we're not good people. You, oh, you think maybe they thought there would be more magical income that they could then pay $30 million back to a bank that they lied to get? Yeah, right. This is why you don't get you... To, how do you not see the train coming? Rhinestones and glitter. <sighs> and glitter is the answer to everything. Yeah, yeah. Um, The accountant was charged, too. They right. lied on all these things to get the money, but eventually the bank is going to come looking for the money. I don't understand how they, it's the Casey Anthony thing. You take the cops to the Universal Studio, you say you work there, you know you don't work there. How, where do you think the train ends? There's a sociopathic element here that I just go, I understand robbing the bank. I mean, I wouldn't do it, but I get, I get the idea of rob and run. I don't get the idea, I don't get the lie to the bank. This will go down in flames. And... I don't know what the payment is. They don't just give you money. Um, they've been convicted on all counts. He's going to Popo for 12 years. She's going for seven. Yeah. I mean, I, I just, I don't see in the whole concept is terrible because if you're saying I need $30 million from the bank to keep up my lifestyle, you clearly don't have it. You're going to have to pay it back. What is the thinking? Some magical thing's going to happen? And you're going to have $50 million? Be able to pay them their 30 back? I don't think they care. Just live for the moment? Yeah. Well, that is really psychopathic. Yes. 
because you're not, it's impulsive. You're not thinking of anything. You got to go to Nancy. The Chrisley watch. Well, they have to put up their national man. They bought two national mansions. What? Yes. Yes. And they're going to have to put those up for sale. His and hers. Auction. His and hers. I don't really know the details on what they bought. His and his and hers. They compared their legal woes to the lessons God gave the prophets, and they said they were using Bible verses to get them through. Come on. Come on. I'm not kidding. I can't make these things up. Oh, my God. Jesus is going to fix it. Just give him a minute, okay? (laughs) God damn it, Paddles. Just give him a minute. Give him a minute. Simmer down. (laughs) Jesus. All right. You you have to go see the picture of this thing. Whoops, sorry. A fisherman in England. Yep. I would have... This is probably where I would have had a heart attack. There, th- fishing is fun until something freakish happens. Uh-huh. A UK fisherman became the envy of anglers everywhere after reeling in a nearly 70-pound monster goldfish. Shut up. Wait till you see the picture of it. Uh-huh. I, If I would have seen it even coming near the boat, I'd have been like, cut the line! Cut the line! <laughs> Throw the pole in! Throw the pole in! He threw it back. This thing's called the carrot. It's famous. I wonder if Carrot Top knows. The carrot, oh, yeah. That's great. He always knew the carrot was in there, he said, but I never thought I would catch it. He's a uh, Worcester. Oh, like, where, where, I wonder if that's where Worcester sauce comes from. Worcester, yeah. England. Probably. Did we just learn something? Yes! Termites. Yes. A Worcester based, he's a company director. Yep. Is that where they made up Worcester sauce? Invented in England. Yay! Yay! I never knew that. Uh, It's really, it's not a goldfish per se, but it looks exactly like if a goldfish in your little thing when you were a kid went crazy and decided to become Godzilla and take over the world. That's how big it looks. (laughs) It's really an actual, it's actually a hybrid species of leather carp and koi carp, though, like the ones in the koi pods. Uh Or, but it, it looks more like the one you had as a kid from the fair or whatever. Uh-huh. Yeah. This, per- this particular you specimen. A fair? A fair. A state fair. You got a fish? I always got a goldfish at the state fair. What? That's where my mom long. <laughs> my, my mom just recently learned that donkeys can jump. What are you talking about? The state fair. I don't. Said, but why do you well, Canada, that? did you have a province fair? The Calgary Stampede. The Calgary Stampede. Okay, that's too big for my kind of what I'm talking about. We don't get fish. <sighs> like at the state fair, like you throw the baseball and hit shit, and then they you give get you. A goldfish. Yeah, you get a goldfish. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's one of the choices. You don't have to take the goldfish. What uh, else can you get? <laughs> you know, a stuffed animal. I always took all living animals. Come on. Any pet, <laughs> any pet I could sneak home. Um, I'm in hamsters, gerbils, goldfish, so whatever. Fish in a bag? <laughs> yeah, they'd have it in a bag, and then you'd have to spend like a buck for the little glass deal. That's ridiculous. But then I'd say to my dad, "Do you really want me to carry this bag around all day?" No, you don't, Dad. So buy the thing, oh and then he'd God. buy the little aquarium deal. Wow. So many things to learn. There's so many things to learn. <laughs> Worcester sauce is yeah. from England. Yeah. This one is really that. This one's 20 years old. And was apparently introduced to the lake 15 years ago. It was something different for anglers to try to catch. It's so great. He threw it back to him. He took his picture. Um, so now somebody else can catch him. Hmm. He's lo- the, the carrot has largely eluded the capture until earlier this month when it was hooked by hatchet. I knew it was a big fish when it took my bait. And went off to the side, went off side to side, up and down with it. Then it came to the surface 34 y- yards out, and I saw that it was orange. That's when I would panic. It was brilliant to catch, but also sheer luck. He spent a whopping 25 minutes reeling the monster in. Wow. It's 30 pounds heavier than what was previously considered to be the world's biggest goldfish, which was caught by Minnesota resident John Fugate in 2019. (laughs) He celebrated his colorful catch in apt fashion by drinking a cup of tea. Uh, well, there, so. well, he's British, you know, whatever. 
Well, in Kentucky, in 2019, a fisherman nabbed a 20-pound koi fish while using only his morning biscuit as bait. No. Yep, man. What? Probably ate half his biscuit, threw it back in. Okay. Wow. We should really get some fish with some goldfish. Just throw them in a lake. Well, most of them will die. That's why you don't want to do that. You don't want to just throw shit randomly in lakes. They'll die. I'm yeah. I know what will live and die for the most part. All right. Um, can we talk about the person? Now I would never wish this on my brother, but I could see it happening. Not anymore. Not anymore. When we were young, in a tw- in our twenties, rescuer saved a Carnival cruise ship passenger who fell overboard and was lost at sea for fifteen hours. I don't want to say that Carnival's usually the one where people are drinking a little too much, but let's just say it's Carnival. But it's for the children. It's not, you know, the Regent, Royal Caribbean. It's, it's usually, what do we call it? What's a polite way to say? Um, discounted. Not discounted. That makes it sound like it's in the sale bin. It's a, a bargain, if you will. Discounted is considered a bargain. I don't think so. No. No, I'd say no. Anyway, it's usually not super expensive. So the 20 somethings, the children, they want to go. And it's not because some of the other ones are getting ridiculously expensive. Um, this guy, he's 28 years old. <laughs> he's drinking at his bar with this, his sister at the bar. That's why I was thinking of Patrick. She's like, dr- she's drinking too, right? And she's like, yeah, I don't know. He just kept getting in trouble for vaping. And I uh, figured he went out to vape. And then she went to bed. Nobody reported him missing till the next day. <laughs> wow. It's okay because he lived, okay? Um, they were in the Gulf of Mexico. Wow. Yeah, he fell over Wednesday night, and then they started a search, but not till 30, uh, Thursday morning. It took a, coast, it took a team effort from Coastal Guard watch standards response crews and our professional maritime partners operating the Gulf to locate the missing individual. How do you stay afloat for 15 hours? If it was not for the alert crew aboard the motor vessel Crinus, this case would have a much more difficult ending. The man had been aboard in the Carnival Valor ship with his sister when he did not return from a trip to the bathroom Wednesday night. Rescuers spotted the man on Thursday, roughly 20 miles from the coast of Louisiana. He's now in stable condition. They posted the, there's a video and you can see him bobbing in the water. I mean it's dark it's dark out. Yeah, but you can wow. see he's floating. I mean, how do, I don't think I could no way. Uh, he was paddling with his arms and waving at helicopters and they hoisted him with a rope. He told the man uh Gross told CNN that the man realistically could have been in the water for 15 hours plus, but we were able to successfully rescue him before we were able to rescue he was able to identify himself to rescuers, but was showing signs of hypothermia, shock, dehydration. <laughs> no shit. Wow. I mean, can you imagine? No. First you fall. First you're probably you drunk. Yeah. You just went out to vape. Was sober. <laughs> <laughs> then you fall off God knows which deck, and basically it's like hitting concrete. Yeah. And then, boing, you're awake. Being drunk might have helped a lot. Yeah, he's probably relaxed when he hit the wall. I shouldn't even say he was drunk. He was drinking. I know that. I don't want to get sued by somebody saying, well, he really wants to have him. Okay, well. He had 44 rum runners. <laughs> no, he had the monkey-ass rum punch, the joke I do in my act. They encourage it. It's their fault. That's what I would say. You encouraged it. Um, Carvana. We're moving on. We're moving on. Shares plummeted after the company announced worse than expected financial results for the third quarter. I believe we've already talked about Carvana on this podcast. And your thoughts on Carvana. And my thoughts. Mm-hmm. Well, I think it's wonderful if the children want to do it. Right. I just can't buy a car out of a gum machine. I can't do it. No. I don't feel like it's too expensive of a purchase for me to be comfortable. I wish I was. And I'm. Co- it's wonderful to me that the children are comfortable doing that. Great. You save yourself that whole bullshit that we, us old people put up with. Uh, wow. There might fall to a dollar stock. I mean, and then here's the reason. Wow. To a $1 stock. 
They reported revenue um, of $3.3 billion, down 22.7%, and about $3 million lower than analyst estimates. They lost, the company had lost $2.67 per share compared to a loss of 38 from the same period a year ago. Retail units sold were, they've only sold 102,000 cars. The total gross profit per unit was thirty five hundred bucks. Wow! That's all they're profiting after what? The gumball machine. The gumball machine. Uh-huh. Total gross profit was three hundred fifty nine million dollars, down from thirty one point four percent a year ago. Wow. The rising cost of borrowing money and overall uncertainty about the economy are hurting auto retailers right now since they can't offer cheap loans to customers. Well, yeah. that's part of it. Yeah. But I also think. Like I went online the last time we talked about this story and I read a bunch of reviews and a lot of them are not good. And that's the thing about the children. Yeah. <laughs> Once you're out, you're out. You're out. Yeah. You don't get back in their good graces. If you want to get back in their good graces, you have to like give them a car. Right. And then they'll go, okay, well, I'll yeah. see if I like this one. Yeah. Which good for them. But um, CEO and co-founder of Carvana, Ernie Garcia. It's him and his dad. Remember the Garcia oh, brothers? Yeah, yeah. Stated that the used car retailer is, is prepping for lower demand and higher depre- depreciation. No, I'm not saying that right. Depreciation. depreciation. Oh, they had an earnings call. Oh, we are planning oh, to. Oh, we are planning our build. We are building our plans around the assumption that next year is a difficult one in our industry, and the economy as a whole. Carvana stock immediately crashed after the earnings report when the company had its worst trading day ever by falling 39 percent. They've lost billions. The 52-week range of the stock, six fifty to three hundred four dollars. Right, it's wow. uncommon to see a stock tra- trading in the three hundreds to go to single digit. See what it is now. It's like GameStop. Ask the ask the the giggle machine. It's like GameStop. It is. Uh, What's our stock today? Stock. Today. Right now. <sighs> Seven bucks. Seven. Mm-hmm. Well, now, here's the thing. I'm no Jim Cramer. <laughs> I'm a comedian who likes hot sauce. I'm not going to tell you. We're going to talk about the FTX guy, that little guy, too, next week. Oh, good. And there's a lot of crypto people that could be in a lot of trouble for doing those ads. Really? Tom, Giselle, keep uh-huh. going. Um, All right, we're going to do a couple things before we get out of here. I don't know how you feel about this. <laughs> Coors Light. Nope. Nope. You nope. come out with a strong no. Uh-huh. Me too. Yeah. I don't love it. Mm-hmm. I want to like it. I just don't. Mick Ultra. One. Mick Ultra. Bud Light. Bud Light. Miller, Miller Light. Mm-hmm. And then I just move on to something. Yeah, and then I don't care. Well, then I'll move on to something real. Not Coors Light. No. <laughs> no. It's not my thing, but it was my brother-in-law's Matt. It's forever. Then he switched. I don't know why. Coors Light new nail polish changes color if your beer is cold enough to drink. No. I will totally drink it. Now you'll do it. Yes. Well, I wonder if it works on all beer. Fact. No one likes warm beer. With the holiday party season already in full swing, Coors Light has invented a new way for beer drinkers to temperature check their glass of beer to avoid an unpleasant surprise. Well, okay, who at a Christmas party is handing out warm beer? Wonderful. Option one, touch the glass of beer with your finger, but where's the fun in that? If nail polish isn't your thing, Coors Light already has a famous color, oh yeah, they're color-changing beer cans that feature the San Juan Mountains that switch from white to blue when the beer reaches optimal drinking temperature, which the brand says is 42 degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> Coors Light should always be served as cold as the Rockies that the, the, the company... They co-developed its $7 chill polish. I'm going to get it. Oh, it's wonderful. I don't, it's not only a pitch to women, because guys wear nail polish now too. Coors Light is targeting any beer drinkers who prefer, what do I do? I take it and I touch the glass? Or the can? It's non-returnable. That means it doesn't work. (laughs) Non-returnable. Blue is a smart gender neutral color. Mm. I don't understand how it works. So I put the fingernail polish on my fingers. Yep. Then I hold the beer. Yep. And then it changes colors. Yeah. 
Seems like a lot of work yeah. when I could just taste the beer yeah. and go, God, that's hot beer. <laughs> Who's serving hot beer at a Christmas party? Exactly. Bad. Um, Good. This is crazy. First of all, did you guys know Unsolved Mysteries is on as a new show again on Netflix? I didn't. Oh, I loved it. I did too. Are they doing the old ones again? Well, that guy's dead, I think. The host, the original yeah, he, host. He was freaky. He was freaky. That's yeah. why it was awesome. Yeah. He was as freaky as the show. The enduring mystery of the 1994 Lake Michigan UFO incident. They're going to do a whole thing. I never heard of it. So get a load of this. Okay. On March 8, 1994, residents living along the shore of Lake Michigan witnessed one of the most widespread UFO sighting histories in history. Sightings in history. Bright multicolored orbs appeared over water appeared over the water and could be seen as far south as the Indiana state line dancing erratically across the night sky. Huh. Hold on. Okay. Local police were overwhelmed with people calling to try to report the flying objects. In total, the dispatchers received over 300 calls from concerned citizen, citizens. The National Weather Service later confirmed the present, presence of large objects in the sky over the lake, objects that they were certain were not planes. Then... They were gone, vanished without a trace. However, despite dozens of witness interviews, no explanation has ever been given regarding the lights, which are now the subject of an episode of Netflix on South Mysteries. That's awesome. Yep. Um, I've got you. These are some of the calls. I've got UFOs in my backyard, Cindy Pravda <laughs> of Grand Haven, Michigan, told a friend over the phone, and this is the same day. According to Detroit Free Press, she was one of the hundreds of people that saw the collection of five or six glowing orbs above up. Uh, orbs above Lake Michigan. More than two decades after the event, she still remembered it clearly. I watched them for a half an hour. Wow. <laughs> they stayed. Wow. wow. Where I'm facing them, the one on the far left moved off. It moved to the highway and then came back in the same position. The one to the right was gone in the blink of an eye, and then eventually everything disappeared quickly. It, was, wasn't, the, it wasn't only the residents of Grand Haven who saw the lights either. Similar accounts were given by people in Holland. Oh, I know where Holland, Michigan is. 22 miles away. Among the Holland witnesses were Daryl and Holly Graves and their son, Joey. I saw six lights out the window above the barn across the street. I went to get up on the sofa and looked. They were red and white and moving. Sightings reported on Lake, all from Lettington, Michigan, all the way down to Indiana State, 200 miles away. Calls were coming in not only to the police, but to the Michigan chapter of what? MUFON! I've joined MUFON when I was in high school. Nice. The Mutual UFO Network, a volunteer nonprofit founded in 1969. I felt good because I was like a volunteer. Right. Yeah. If anything UFO happens, I'm available to help. You do get a pin. Nice. Yeah. That's you make great. a small donation, you know, whatever you can afford. Right. Um, it's the world's oldest and largest civilian UFO research investigation. You get a newsletter back in the day. Now oh. I'm sure it's all online. While it's certainly strange for such a large number of people to report the same phenomenon, perhaps the most compelling evidence regarding the, the incident came from the observations of a radar operator for the National Weather Service. Huh. One Holland police officer heard statements from numerous witnesses, all of whom described exactly what Prav Pravda and the Graves family saw, bright, flashing, moving orbs, seemingly random directions. And then the guy called a meteorologist. Um, their conversation was published a year after the event. It's been made public. Throughout the call, they discussed the mundane ex explanations for the unidentified, including was it a nearby radio tower with newly installed lights and da da da. da. Um, at one point, he said he saw three, sometimes four blips, and they weren't planes. Planes. So this guy's saying, no, it's not a plane. No. Um, he revealed that when he found out his phone call with had been recorded, he was terrified people might think he was a freak. Just people think might you're a kook or lying or not credible. I'm supposed to be a scientist. This is the weather service guy. Right. There was no simple explanation for what he'd seen. He went down the line of technical glitches and weather phenomenon, yet nothing lined up with came up on his screen. Screen. So I want to watch that episode. Yes. Why? Well, I wonder why they always go over water. Uh, I've never saw one at the Lake of the Ozarks. Maybe you see their own reflections. Maybe they, we have too many docks and too many lights. Right? The, especially the blue ones. The blue lights are yeah. the best. Um, yeah. All right, termites, we are going to close out on a feel-good story. Ready? Yeah. 
This makes me super proud because it's the zoo I grew up going to, St. Louis Zoo. One of, it's so great. We had Marlon Perkins as our um, so Marlon Perkins Mutual yeah. of Omaha. He was our zookeeper till he forever, like for years. We had the be- we have the be- and it's free. St. Louis Zoo is free. Like when I went on the road, I go to other people's zoos, and I'm like, what? You want twenty five dollars? And then some of them were terrible. Yeah. <clears throat> Kansas City. Oh, come on. Uh, I'm just saying. Back in the day, I haven't been there in a while. You know who's got a really good one? Omaha. San Diego, Seattle. Seattle. Mm-hmm. I do judge by your zoo. Yeah. Rocky Laporte used to do a funny thing about that. I think it was the Kansas City dude. He's like, I'm not sure it was a zoo. I think it was just like animals that were like there. <laughs> and then they like put, you know, a fence up and they were like, yeah, that's our raccoon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the St. Louis Zoo. Home of Marlon Perkins. This is great. It's a great zoo. Um, this is one of my first open mic jokes. I don't want to sue her. I don't want to say the St. Louis Zoo is awesome, but I'd put it up against Africa. <laughs> <laughs> the St. Louis Zoo announces the birth of a of adorable endangered leaf monkey. Leaf monkey? I, I'd never seen one. And leaf? now I want one. Oh no. They have pumpkin colored hair. The pumpkin-haired fur baby was born right in time for Halloween. Oh, he was great. born. He was born on my birthday. Oh yeah! What? <laughs> yeah. 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 I don't know why they're just telling us about it now, but mm-hmm. the St. Louis Zoo announced the birth of its first ever Francois Langer, an endangered species also known as a leaf monkey. So the now one-month-old rhubarb was born September thirtieth. Yeah! 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 In its primate canopy trails area, the Missouri Poop Missouri Zoo posted on Facebook. Zookeepers cared for the little one until her mother, Dolly, 16 years old, was healthy enough to take over the role. Wait till you see this thing. It's like a monkey. <coughs> if a monkey had the eyes of a cat. Oh, cool. Well, the roundness of a cat. It's the cutest thing ever. Okay. Now, I don't know if it's like the other ones we talk about in this podcast where, you know, you get them in gangs and then they start attacking people and shit. I don't know. I don't really trust monkeys. But this thing... Rhubarb's birth is part of an association of zoos and aquarium species survival plan, which works to maintain a healthy population of Francois Langers in North American Zoo. Dolly's been a phenomenal mother, and throughout the birth, uh, and and through the benefit of her having a great relationship with the keeper staff, has been incredibly accommodating to the supportive care that she and Rhubarb need to get back on track. Great. It's the cutest thing. <laughs> Somebody said it looked like Prince Harry. Now, that would be a toy stuffed animal with sales through the roof. So you know what the St. Louis Zoo will do? Because we're smart like that. We're good with merch. They will make a stuffed rhubarb. And they will oh sell They will sell it. rhubarb yes. in the gift shop. Take the train. There's a wonderful little train for kids. Rhubarb. Yeah. Where do you see a picture of one, though? We'll put it in the show notes. A leaf monkey. A leaf monkey. I'd never heard of it. Huh. It's the cutest thing ever. That's fantastic. Yeah, that's the good news. That's a feel-good that. story. Yes, it is. Feel good. Move on, termites. All right, termites. I have to go to Spokane, Washington. Yep. El Cajon. El Cajon. Yeah, and then um, let's just look before I sign out and say good. Night, night, termites. Oh, I was going to read where else I'm going. Well, here's the thing. I'm off till. Thank God, I'm tired. <laughs> I am tired. I mean, I'm excited to do the last show, so. And R- El Cajon and Riverside, for whatever reason, I, I would not think I would, uh, you know, sell those shows out. And what are you signing for? Los Angeles? You're going to <coughs> Charleston, West Virginia. I'm going to. This is all after January. In January. <coughs> In January. Mm-hmm. Charleston, West Virginia. And then here we come, Florida. Fort Pierce, Florida. Coral Springs, Florida. Fort Myers, Florida. Oh, that's my mom and dad. Yep. Mm. I got to check and see if that venue's open. That was a private thought. Yeah. The hurricane. Your, your mom and dad are well, my mom and dad are just north. They'll drive down. <laughs> Trust me, them and their friends will figure that out. Then St. Petersburg, Orlando. Look at me getting to go to Florida in January. <laughs> 
Lewis, where are you going? Oh, I think it's Montana, North Dakota. <laughs> Did you say Fargo, Lewis? <laughs> Duluth? You, if you want to have fun as a termite, and you know I say this with love, go to Lewis Black's schedule and look at January, February, and March. He thinks he may die in a snowdrift, and I don't disagree. <laughs> I think their bus could break down, and they're going to turn into the Donner Party. Totally. And I don't know who's going to get eaten first, but I guarantee you, Lou's going to do the eating. He is not going to be left out there starving because food is his main concern in life. And then Ben Salem um, to Parks Casino. I love that gig. And then Las Vegas. And then Scottsdale and Nashville and New Orleans. And it just keeps going and going and going. So, anyway, turbines. Um, I've got to go pack because here's my packing challenge. There's going to be heavy snow in Spokane. Heavy. Heavy. And then I'll go to San Diego, and it's going to be 80. Yeah. <laughs> and then, the, then they'll look at me when I get off the plane in San Diego like, hey, Freakazoid, can you not read a weather app? What's with all the clues? You're right. Sorry. And then in Riverside, and then, you know, wherever. All right, termites. You are now officially winter termites. Yeah. Your Christmas termites. We've moved on. Thanksgiving's done. We're moving on, moving on to Christmas termites. Holiday termites. For my Jewish friends, too. Not yeah. just Christmas. Let's forget about that. Maybe buy some tickets for Christmas. Yeah, you could buy tickets for Christmas presents. How easy is that? Yep. Boom. And we will see you, Termites, down the road. And then, uh, we'll see you next week. And enjoy the Dolly movie. Dolly over here. Yeah. Enjoy we'll the it. Dolly movie. We'll do an update next week. And we'll do an update. All right, that's it. Night, night, Termites. <laughs>